the Matrix has defeated me. I am now nothing more than a corporate peon. I have given up my dreams of ever having my own business. To give my life, my soul, to the man. To get that next promotion. To get that 3% raise. <laughs> Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance. So I've had a lot of changes going on in my life, okay? Man, I used to work at NASA. NASA! Used to work for the government, NASA. Quit that because it was an insane asylum. Uh, then I went to tax, and I did taxes for about a year and a half, two years. And now I'm going to my first day. That's right, it's my first day as a corporate accountant. And oh, by the way, I'm now a senior accountant. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people are taken aback. They're like, strong man, all you do is talk about you know, financial independence and be self-employed and don't work for the man. Why are you working for the man? And it's true. I'm working for the man, 100%. Well, here's why, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually a very simple reason, okay? I don't make a freaking enough money on my side jobs right now to not work for the man. I'm still partially stuck in, as Andrew Tate calls it, the matrix, okay? Now, how much money do you need to make in order to not work for the matrix, to not work for the man? Well, there's a couple boxes you gotta have checked, okay? A big thing that people don't consider when they quit their job to become self-employed is health insurance. You need health insurance, okay? Unless you're a psycho, you know, or you don't have kids, you're just a degenerate. But you need health insurance. Now, I'm in a special position where the military, I have health insurance, it's like $239 a month, and I can cover my entire family. But that's a very unique circumstance. A lot of people, to afford health insurance, they're gonna have to dole out way, way, way more money. So if you wanna be self-employed and not work for the man, you're gonna have to have a business up and running and making enough revenue to sustain you and your family and pay for the massive increase in health insurance. Now, when it comes to me, my family, I got a wife, a stay-at-home wife, and two kids, I got a mortgage, and I got a car payment. <laughs> so because of all that, I don't make enough, quite enough, from my side jobs to be able to 100% support myself, my family, my house, my car payment, all of that garbage. So lesson number two, besides health insurance, is you want to make sure that you have no debt besides your mortgage, okay? No freaking debt when you decide to go off and not work for the man anymore. A big reason that I have to still work for the man is this car payment. Okay, car payment, that's right. Now, I have enough money where I could theoretically, well, not theoretically, I could actually do it. I could pay off my entire car in one fell swoop. This freaking, that van, the freaking van. But I don't want to do that because I'd rather take, let's say I owe, what do I owe, like 20 something, 20 grand on it. I'd rather take 20 grand and invest it in VT and let it grow over the next decade, two decades, three decades. Then put that into a car where I have a 2.59% interest rate. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not paying off that van. But because I have that payment, that's a lot of extra money leaving the bank account. And when you're first starting a business, you're not making money. You don't have a job. Okay, You don't have a steady paycheck going into your account. You have to, every dollar that you make, you have to hunt and find and you know generate revenue for yourself. And it's really hard. When you got a family and you got a car payment and a mortgage and all this other crap to become self-employed. So you need to pay off your car, okay? Third lesson, if you want to become self-employed, 100% self-employed, not work for the man. You got to have everybody on board. It's got to be a team effort, okay? You don't want to start self-employment and then your spouse like thinks that they still have the same lifestyle that they had when you weren't self-employed because when you first start your business, you're not going to be making as much money as you were in your full-time job, usually. Okay? I mean, obviously, there's exceptions to every rule, but you're not going to be making as much money. So you, everybody needs to be on board and be able to understand that you can't spend as much money as before. Now, we didn't have that problem necessarily, but that's something that you got to keep in mind because if you have your spouse that's just spending like, you know, hand over fist, blowing money you're not going to be self-employed. You're going to have to go back to work. <laughs> so that's a third lesson, okay? So overall, 
I mean, yeah, I need to make more money from my side businesses than I'm doing right now to actually do full self-employment, okay? I don't make enough. That's just the sad part of it. So overall, you know, my goal is I'm going to work a corporate job, but when I get home, I'm going to still do my side businesses and start to generate uh, more and more revenue to the point where I could eventually potentially <coughs> support myself with self-employment. Now, here's the rub, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Here's the big number one reason <clears throat> that I'm going to a corporate job. Guess what? I can now do taxes and I can now do bookkeeping and I'm not competing with my employer. See, imagine this, all right? Let's say you work for a tax firm that does taxes and bookkeeping and you wanna start your own tax and bookkeeping business. You're directly competing with your employer. And guess what happens if your employer finds out that <clears throat> you were doing taxes and bookkeeping on the side and they didn't know about it <clears throat> and you're theoretically competing with them. You're gonna get fired. <laughs> so if you wanna start your business in the field that you're currently working in, I mean, number one, you can try to sneak around it and hope nobody finds out. Good luck with that. Or number two, you go take a similar job that isn't directly competing so you can go ahead and build your business. So now that I no longer work, for a tax firm, okay? I no longer work, I don't I no longer work for bookkeeping. You know, I don't do bookkeeping anymore at my job. I'm not competing with my job, okay? So now I can without fear, without fear of getting fired prematurely, I can go ahead if I want to do people's taxes on the side. I mean, what's going to stop me? <laughs> as long as it doesn't interfere with your work. I mean, I'll be at work uh 5 days a week. So, that's a huge reason that you know, I'm still working for the man. And this was, that was all part of my master plan. Like my whole master plan was I was at NASA, hated it. I mean, that was like the, that was the last straw. It was like the, the final straw that broke the camel's back. I was like, I hate the government, you know? I mean, obviously I'm still in the military, but <laughs> it's a different story, but it's only part-time. I hate the government. I hate all the crap they do in the psychosis insane environment that you live in working for the government for me, for, go, 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 give me up my pension though my government and i was like okay i need to be self-employed i was I, I was really good at this tutoring thing this tutoring thing was really popping off i could be self-employed i could make more money than i did working for the government and so i said okay i'm gonna do tax so i started working in tax and my master plan was once i got good enough at tax which i mean i guess i'm there we'll see <laughs> Once I got good enough at tax, I was then going to jump to a corporate job and then do taxes on the side until I built my tax business in order to not compete with my employer. And now here I am, okay? So all you doubters that think I'm just working for the man forever, we'll see about that. Anyway, I'm coming up on my first day of work. I'm nervous. <sighs> Never had a job before. I don't know. What should I do? <laughs> But all right, guys, uh, I need to actually find where I'm supposed to report to. So I will see you later. Wish me luck. I'll be a good boy. Cheers.